Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty. We are coming at you on June 2nd, 2021. Uh, Still somehow managing to survive all the chaos of the Biden administration. But uh, uh, before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. So let's jump right into uh, some of the crazy stories out there. Um, Now, this one, uh, it's not so much a crazy Biden story. This one's a little bit more on the conservative side here. And has to do with in texas they recently passed the star spangled banner protection act and it requires that the national anthem be played at sports events and uh, a lot of this was uh sort of inspired by i guess mark cuban with his mavericks and i'm not sure if there were some other sports teams that got into this as well but he was one of them who didn't uh he elected not to play the star spangled banner at one of his uh, uh games i believe last year and yes. I think it was somehow connected with BLM, and um, it. Anyway, it, it set off kind of a little bit of a firestorm about whether or not uh, these sports teams should be playing the the, the uh, national anthem. It's sort of a tradition. I believe the tradition started off uh, around World War Two or World War One with baseball. Like I can't quite. Remember. I think it was World War One with baseball. Yes. World War One, yeah. And so they started playing that at the baseball games, and the public seemed to love it, and so they kept doing it. Um, so, <clears throat> from a libertarian perspective, I don't know that you know we really need uh, nationalism in private endeavors but there's also an awful lot of public money unfortunately that goes into some of these private endeavors so what do you guys think uh star spangled banner does it need protection do we need to uh, force people to hear it at every sporting uh, event i am totally i am totally against this law okay <laughs> and let me tell you why it is true i love to go to i used to go to the king's games especially when my kids were younger i used to go to the king's game or, or professional team and they, used to, they would play the, uh, the national anthem uh, at every game. And I used to love to stand there and put my hand, my hand over my chest and listen to the, um, the national anthem. Sometimes I will even try to sing along with it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a, a singer, but sometimes I sing along. I love that. Mm. Okay, I really do. I think there's something about being an American, something that should hold us together as Americans. But that should be in our traditions. I don't think laws should, should force us to be patriotic. And that is what this law does. Now, Mark Cuban one time decided he's going to stop playing the national anthem because some people in the community didn't, um, their voices were not being heard. I don't know what damn nonsense he was talking about. Okay. But I don't think we should be forced to be patriotic. I think we should be good Americans. We should love our flag. We should love. We should love our national anthem, but no one should force us to do that. I wish they would play. I wish they would play the national anthem at every professional sports event, but no one should be forced to do so. Another uh, idea, so fantastic, so above reproach, so great and wonderful in every way that it has to be mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, on, so, head on that one. <laughs> so, so I will be uh, on uh, Leon's side, exactly as Leon stated. I mean, I, I feel exactly the same uh, way about, um, you know, the national an- anthem on a personal basis. Uh, and I'm not, uh, you know, thinking, oh, Oh boy, we got the world's greatest military. Let's go smash some people in the Middle East that don't earn a nickel every, you know, every two weeks. You know, let's, uh, you know, that I'm thinking in terms of the Constitution, the founding fathers, the the federalized uh, government that we have that uh, you know represents people using representatives, and and it's not a strict democracy, and so on. You know, I mean, so so is it's a a very well thought out by the founding fathers and it's 
been kind of bastardized over the the decades and centuries since. But uh, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm not thinking about the government. I'm thinking about uh, you know the Constitution and and the people of the United States uh, and so on. So uh, yeah, but uh, for it to be mandatory, <laughs> I bet Hitler made it mandatory. You better see guys to him when he was uh, passing by. And if you didn't, hmm. you'd probably have some guys that were walking along behind that would smack you upside the head for not <laughs> uh, saluting yes. Herr he 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 Fuhrer yes. uh, as he uh, sauntered by or went by in his um, uh, Mercedes Benz. So, um, uh, yeah, so that that's, that's what this seems like to me. And uh, there you have it. <clears throat> But 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 Jason, you you raised the the, um, the 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 issue of public money being involved in many of these stadiums, which is absolutely true, because I mean that's probably one of the big wealth transfers, you know, from middle class people to billionaires, to those people who own those teams who are in stadiums that are owned by the cities or or the counties in which they are located. Do you think? Are you saying that you think that the the fact that there's there's the the, um, the public involvement in these events could make could could give some credence to this law. Well, I, I think that's that's kind of the nose under the tent for the camel there. So um, I I don't I it, personally I, I I think ideally you don't have any connection with government to these things. These should be private entities, just like if somebody puts on a movie or a play. Right. You shouldn't have the government subsidizing part of the ticket cost or the theater cost or whatever. That should be totally based on whatever the market's willing to do for that um it's funny though because you, you mentioned the sports stadiums and and i had just seen one i i think stossel had a piece not too long ago where he talked about all these wealth transfers to all these billionaire uh, arena owners <laughs> and they yes and uh, one of them is the the new raiders stadium out there in las vegas and um you know i've driven by it a few times on my trips down to vegas and you know one of these days i'll probably go see a game there but one of the things that they say makes the field so expensive is that it's literally a grass indoor field. And the way they accomplish that is uh, because it's a dome, it's in Vegas. And if they had a non-dome, then it would just be really hot <laughs> out there yes. in some parts of the season. <clears throat> so uh, so what they do to accomplish the growing of grass and that is they have a, a whole field that can literally move out of the stadium. So it, it's like uh, it's on wheels or something, and they can just transport that thing right out of the stadium so that it can rotate out and grow in the sunlight. Uh, and, wow. and and so they, 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 the Raiders owner had said, and I think he's uh, uh, one of Al Davis's uh, offspring, I guess, because his name is Davis too, but he had said uh, um, that, you know, any stadium, I wouldn't settle for any less than real grass. <laughs> and, and he says... Well, he's, he's asking the public to pay for it. Pay for it exactly. Public, yes. 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 Huge subsidies for it. And then he says uh, in the interview, he says, well, you know, I can't afford this. I'm not a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, that. Yeah, okay, get the public to pay for it. Then the funny thing was in the problem <laughs> piece, it shows that, well, the, the value of the team is like the $3 billion or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of crazy. But I mean, the idea that, you know, these guys are constantly uh, coming to the, the, the public trough for <clears> government <throat> money. The idea then that there could be government strings attached and, you know, be best to just, you know, not have any of this uh, complete separation. Government should be really small and simple and transparent. And that will help us all to see if there's any kind of cronyism or graft going on. It, 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 will help us, it will help us live better lives, too. But but um, to, to, to keep this in, in, in the realms of where this discussion started, the government should not be involved in these stadiums at all, okay? We should not be subsidizing billionaires. In the same way, the government should not be involved in forcing us, in forcing the national anthem to be played at these events. So you are right. The government should be out of this thing wholesale, out. They have no business in this. Well, and uh, some place where the government is saying it has uh, uh, some business in is uh, the cruise lines. So, uh, you know, once the pandemic started, the cruise lines had some some sort of big, I guess, uh, slip ups. They had a case uh, where 
I guess a few people had coronavirus on a cruise ship that sat outside of San Francisco for, I, I think, a few months with people stuck on it, uh, yes. sort of being quarantined on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, since then, uh, so all the cruise lines pretty much shut down. But there's been a lot of uh, push by the companies to get back up and going this year, now, especially now that there's a vaccine. And yet, uh, even though cruise lines have started back up in other countries, they haven't been allowed to start here in the United States. And uh, one of the very interesting aspects to this story is that most businesses are under the jurisdiction of a state. So the, the rules can vary from state to state, how a restaurant reopens, maybe even uh, you know city to city, uh, but uh, how a restaurant or a factory or other things reopen. But these cruise ships, uh, they fall under a federal jurisdiction uh, in these ports. And so <laughs> it's the CDC and the White House that is really setting the tone. And so if you really wanted to see how businesses would be, I guess, allowed to operate under, I guess, a, a, a blue regime or a, a Biden regime, if, if he had complete control over it, you're seeing it with the cruise industry. They're literally uh, still sitting at dock, not allowed to have any customers, even though there's a lot of people who bought tickets and are interested in, in getting going on these things. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on this story? Leon, uh, go ahead. Oh, if you well, <clears throat> You know, there's a little bit of insanity going on here, you know. Well, I guess anything involving the government always involves some level of insanity. Look at what's going on with the airlines. The airlines obviously are functioning. Some, I mean, we're hearing about some really bad stuff going on in the airlines these days. A lot of fights <clears> going on and all that kind of stuff. I think our air hostess got a, um, a flight attendant, got a, a couple of a, a teeth knocked out just recently. But the point is, though, the friendly skies, <laughs> friendly skies. <laughs> yes, the friendly skies. <laughs> but the point is, though, those airplanes are more crowded than the, than the cruise ships. They are more crowded. So if you're going to talk about the spread of Corona, you're going to probably see more potential spread on an airplane than than on, on a cruise ship. And the other thing, too, we are all nearly all of us are vaccinated. OK. You know, I think 150, 160 million people are vaccinated or something like that. At least I had one dose. And then on top of that, there's a whole bunch of people who have had who had the virus and, and thus they have um, had the virus and recovered and thus they have natural immunity. So what is the logic of keeping the cruise line shut down? What is the logic of it? There's none. There's none. None at all. I mean, and if people want to go take the, if the, if there's a risk, then let us manage the risk. If there's a risk of, 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 oh, we might get infected, you know, and they want to protect us from that potential infection, well, that is our risk to take. So what is the point of shutting down the cruise lines? There is none. They are destroying the livelihoods of, 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 of many people involved in this industry. Day in, day out, they can't go to work. Some of them are still taking unemployment. Some of them are now are not are being paid not to work and this is the madness that's going on we want people to get back to work but then we're shutting down the industries wholesale it is crazy god help us yeah i, I i'm gonna agree uh again with leon and it's uh yeah he's he's also he didn't mention the whatever percentage of the population that were already uh immune to any kind of sars uh uh, COVID type of vaccine from previous uh, very similar uh, viruses that have uh, already gone through the the uh, population and has caused a, a lot of uh, immunities uh, that cover COVID. Good point. Uh, and and Good they're, point. they're immune from them too. Uh, they, they were always immune. So um, why some people didn't have any symptoms, you know, and sure. so on. So, um, yeah, it, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> they could give them a little bit of uh, that taste of control, and they don't want to give it up. You know, exactly. It's like if if they can't tell the states what who to let open or not, they'll oh well. Hey, we got control over the airlines, which they do. They're federally regulated, and they've got control over the cruise lines. So, yeah, and that's another. That's a good question, though. Why do you allow the airlines to to um, start up, but you're not 
doing the cruise lines. Cruise, yes. Maybe, What's maybe the logic? because. It, Maybe, Leon, because the cruise lines go somewhere else besides the United States and the airlines are all around <laughs> in the U.S. I don't know. I to play. The, the airlines do go outside the U.S. too. They so do. They do. Well, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. But, I mean, if you shut them all down, then that shuts the whole nation down. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, okay. So, if you shut all that down, you shut the whole nation down. But then this still leaves you with the, with the, with the, with the, with the question, why punish the cruise Cruise lines. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, okay. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Okay. We don't want those cruise people going out to some, you know, tropical island and picking up COVID <laughs> and bringing it back to the United States. Okay. Oh, geez. That's, you know, they, they pick it up. They go. First thing you want to do when you're in a cruise ship, you get to, uh, you know, a well, tropical uh, island is get yes. off the ship and get onto the island and go around and commiserate with the locals. And so, because um, <laughs> I remember uh, having done that myself. And so, yeah, and you want to go on the zip line and you're right up there, chubby chubby with uh, uh, chummy chummy with with the uh, zip line guy, and he's hooking without you wearing a mask too. <laughs> yeah, without wearing a mask, and he's he's clipping you into your. Uh, your harness and down you go, you know, in between the trees of the beautiful tropical paradise. Yes. And so now they're going to come back and, and bring that COVID from that guy clipping the harness. Uh, and they're going to bring it back to the folks in Des Moines, Iowa. So that's the problem. I think I Yeah, just, just playing devil's advocate. Of course, of course, you know, the government is going to save us from all evils, yeah, right? They're going to save us from all ills that yeah. will come our way. God right. help us if right. these people have to save us. Right. Well, it, yeah, it's, it's, that's another story. You know, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not, not agreeing with that. I don't think that's a good reason to shut yeah. down the cruise line. I'm just right, saying right, maybe right. that's what they're thinking. I don't okay. know. Well, it's clear that we, we, we're not going to have much uh, smooth sailing under the Biden administration. Uh, but another place <laughs> where they're experiencing some choppy waters is the Magic Kingdom in Disneyland. And uh, recently they had a, uh, a sort of a a little bit of an expose blow up where they were trying to push critical race theory on their staff. And so critical race theory is essentially this, this uh, idea that uh, it, it's essentially trying to, usually when lefties describe it, they say, okay, it's trying to teach diversity, but in reality, it's, it's really trying to teach reverse racism <laughs> is what really uh, it's got, it amounts to in most of these cases. We've talked about how they try to put critical race theory in math and the, through the schools in California and how they're trying to do it in all of these other areas. And, and it really uh, becomes a, an issue of trying to root out white supremacy is what they claim they're doing. And it, it, it really turns into an ugly witch hunt. Well, at Disneyland, apparently they were telling their, their employees in their training, um, uh, they were telling them things uh, such as uh, in, in what they called reimagine tomorrow uh, initiative. Uh, they were saying, recognize the ways in which the pandemic is disproportionately in affecting the black community and do not question or debate black colleagues lived experiences. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I can't imagine if you're going there to uh, dress up as a mouse and entertain some kids, why you would need to get in a conversation about um you know, questioning or debating black colleagues lived experiences. <laughs> I'm not, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that was a problem at Disneyland or that, you know, Mickey and Goofy were having some dust stuffs over this, but apparently <laughs> this is, this is a thing. And so anyways, a, a reporter reported on this and he put some of the quotes out there and I guess Disney uh, actually uh, has pulled back on their critical race theory training yes. now because of some yes. of the public outrage. Uh, you guys have some thoughts on this uh, whole magic kingdom story? The reporter, oh the reporter was Christopher Rufo. Uh, uh, um, Tim, if you if you wish to go ahead, go ahead. No, not really, uh, because you're so good at this. I... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, okay, Jason, I'm gonna take issue with something you just said. Okay, you use the expression "reverse racism." Okay, I find that so objectionable. You would not believe. You know why I find it objectionable? Because it's just because, racism. <laughs> yes, exactly. It implies, you know, reverse racism implies that racism only goes one way. And critical race theory is all about racism, but it's only coming from a different direction. That's all. Okay? So 
I really have a problem with the word re, uh, reverse racism, but not not to say I'm I'm not I'm not going to hate you for it. Don't worry about it. Oh okay? no, I I completely agree with you in concept. It's just that's sort of the way that they bastardized the language, and I I, I bought yeah, it. Yeah, I know. But you know. you you, you maybe, got me. You vaccinated maybe, me. Again. Jason, <laughs> maybe you should use the term multi-directional racism. <laughs> Uh oh! It looks like uh, we we might have lost Leon. He might have been frozen yeah. out. Well, um, uh, at least we'll I froze him. Okay. With a smile. Oh, there, there he goes. Oh, there he's he back. Is. Now he's back. <laughs> he's back. Yeah. Did I you don't know. Like... I don't know what happened there. I, uh, I started I said, talking all of a sudden. Well, I, I'm not going to debate your experience and what just happened. <laughs> your lived experience. <laughs> you I'm do not dare. You, you do not dare that. question my lived experience. Okay. You, you understand that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I suggested he use the term multi-directional racism. Multi-directional racism. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know, but one interesting things about this thing here, I don't know if you guys remember um, Grant Grant Napier. He used to be a, 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 a Kings uh, a, a Kings uh, a commentator Sacramento for Kings. Sacramento Kings. You know, Grant Napier lost his job. You know why Grant Napier lost his job? Because he and um, um, a former player was having a conversation, and the former player said, um, Black, Black Lives, Lives Matter. Matter. And Grant Napier replied, All Lives Matter, every one of them. And because he said, All Lives Matter, they kicked him out of uh, the Kings. Now imagine that his livelihood was destroyed for those words. Disney is now telling us we cannot say all lives matter anymore. At least they're telling their employees. You can't say all lives matter. So Disney is trying to tell us now that some lives matter more than others. I thought we were all equal before the law and all equal before God. But these people with their woke insanity is now telling us, well, there are certain people that are better than us and their lives matter. And we should bow down to this woke madness. We are living in times, well, maybe it's 1984, where all of the things that we knew growing up, all of the values, all of the values of Western civilization that brought us to where we are, are now being told to us as evil, as something we should never learn. We have to unlearn these things. These woke people, who probably don't even clean up their damn rooms, they want to tell us how to live and what to think or what to believe and the kind of life we should be living. This is madness on steroids. Yeah, I bet they don't show up to work on time either. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so what's going to happen when they have the show, the parade down the middle of uh, Main Street and Minnie Mouse is late? <laughs> because, you know, well, it's, because well, you see, Minnie Mouse couldn't come on time because then she'll be acting white. It, it, you know? Acting too white, <laughs> yeah. And Minnie Mouse happens to be white, but doesn't want to act too white, so she's yes. not going to be on, be there on time. And on now time. the whole parade. Right. Now they're every all the kids are going. Where's Minnie Mouse? Where's Minnie Mouse? And you know, and there's Mickey, but no Minnie. And uh, well, uh, you know, that's what happens when you have wokeness in Disneyland. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure what color Minnie Mouse is. I mean, she's yeah, got I, a bunch of different I, I colors don't know. going yeah. on. But, but Donald Duck is white. I mean, okay. yeah. <laughs> and that fool can't figure out how to wear pants either. <laughs> I don't want that to become a new white oh racial stereotype. <laughs> Walking around without pants. <laughs> anyway, oh, uh, goodness. it's about that time in our show for our knucklehead noise patrol. Point in our show where we say talk about something silly or ridiculous that some politician or media figure said, and so today's knucklehead noise patrol, uh, we have uh, sort of left wing activist uh, David Hogg, who is sort of famous we're, for we're getting a shooting. we're you know, getting a, an echo. echo. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I wonder. I don't think it's on my end because I've got headphones on. Okay, but, okay, um, but anyway. Well, so, anyway. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, lefty activist uh, David Hogg, and so he was a school shooting survivor, but he's since, you know, gone on to do many, many uh, anti-gun, uh, <coughs> um, anti-gun 
sort of uh, rallies and such like that to, to lead those. Well, uh, recently uh, in an interview a couple of weeks ago, uh, he was uh, quoted as saying regarding masks. So, you know, he wants to make sure he's on the right side of every uh, left wing issue. He said, I feel the need to continue wearing my mask outside, even though I'm fully vaccinated, because the inconveniences of having to wear the mask is more than worth it uh, to have people not think I'm a conservative. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the oh, influence of the mask faithful, virtue signaling, all this wonderful stuff combined. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have anything apparently to do with the virus. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Don't worry, David. We're not going to miss, uh, misconstrue that you're an intelligent person either. <laughs> you know, you know, it's amazing. These these, these lefties, you know, you know, they, like I said, you know, they they they, they, can't, they they probably wouldn't even clean up their room, but they want to tell us how to live. Yeah. You know, this guy, okay, fine. He had a trauma in his life at a very young age. Actually, he survived a school shooting, which is, I mean, it could be traumatic for any anybody. Much less for somebody his age. What, was he actually there though? I I've... yeah, he was there. He was oh, there. He was. he was in the school. He, okay. He was in the school right. when the was shooting he, Was he in the vicinity of the shooter? I can't. I, I thought there was some question about that. I don't know. I, I haven't well, paid a lot of attention. As far as I know, he was in the school. Was he okay. around where the shooting was actually occurring? Yeah. I, I don't know that. Okay. But he was in the school. All right. But anyway, so, but anyway I'm sorry. Be yeah, be, he, just because he had this trauma, which fine, I would admit it could be traumatic for him. He has this trauma. He suddenly now have joined this leftist woke people who could tell us what to think and what to believe. All of a sudden, we hear David Hogg all over CNN and MSNBC and all that stuff expounding about the virtues of his way of life. Oh, God, guns. We can't have guns. That's only for those evil right wing right wing people. These people are unbelievable, you know, unbelievable. Like I said, they should go clean up their rooms before they mouth off about the way we should live. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, yeah, I think you should. Somebody said this. I, I think I read this in our article or whatever. But somebody he should wear two or three masks just to you know double and triple up on his wokeness and his ability to be a you know, a, a spokesperson for the left there. Yes, you know, that, that's true. Does that that, that magnify uh, your your woke signal to everybody? If you put on two, then your you're virtue. twice as woke. Yeah. And if you put on three, yeah. you're three times as woke. Well, yeah, it will show, it will definitely show your allegiance to, to the great Fauci, you know? Yeah. yeah. If you wear and three if, masks now, yes. And if fear, fear, if fear is a virtue, then you are signaling that you're virtuous. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I fear we've run to the end of our time, and uh, <laughs> that's the end of our show. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll hope to see you at the next one. Until then, stay free. Thank you for listening to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, a production of Libertarian Counterpoint. Watch our shows each week on Comcast Channel 17 in Sacramento, Monday at 5.30 p.m. and Thursday at 8 p.m.